Not every game release gets the reception it deserves. Here are the seven most overlooked titles of the decade. The last 10 years have seen more game releases than we dare to count. And with more and more digital distribution services available, it can be difficult to keep track of which new games are coming out when. So it's no surprise then that some great games slip by unnoticed. And in this video, we'll be looking at seven games from the past decade that deserved more fanfare. It won't replace millions of sales or a Metacritic score in the 90s, but at least they'll know that someone loves Loves them. Here, in no particular order, then, are the seven most overlooked games of the decade. Look, Daddy, it's you. The Vermintide games are, if we're speaking candidly, partly the reason this list exists. It's left for dead with giant rat men, set during the final days of the Warhammer fantasy universe. But this is no lazy tie-in. It's a slick, reactive, thrilling multiplayer game that's different every time you play it. Both the original and the sequel show a bleak and detailed version of a doomed old world. And it brings to life characters that feel like they're torn right from the pages of Games Workshop fluff. There's even a deep, engaging loot system to keep you playing long after you've seen every level. And while there's certainly a huge audience that already knows and loves the game, you can't help but feel that more people should be playing it. So our advice to you would be don't be put off by the 7 out of 10 reviews or the overwhelming warhammeriness. Warhammerosity of it all? Just give it a try. If you find a few friends with even a passing interest in working together and killing monsters, Vermintide will gnaw away at your free time like Skaven at the underbelly of the Empire. Which is a very Warhammer way of saying it's great. Poor old Bioshock 2. It didn't have a chance, really, did it? Trying to follow up on an epoch-defining first-person game is next to impossible. Shut up, Half-Life 2. And the second visit to Rapture is a great example of the sequel paradox. Yes, we wanted more of the same, but also we wanted something slightly different. Just not as different as Bioshock Infinite. So, yes, it's complicated. It's one of those games that scored well while being criticised for retreading the same ground as the original. Rapture was simultaneously a world we wanted to explore more, but one that felt best with the air of mystery left after the first game. But Bioshock 2 certainly isn't bad. It's arguable that the plasmids were better, the enemies were better, at some points even the story was better. But that big twist from the first game became so embedded in our collective game brains that a return visit to Rapture felt like a disappointing holiday. And after that, the gorgeous, emotionally challenging Bioshock Infinite skyhooked into our lives with a new setting and far more to say, consigning the second game to sequel oblivion. And frankly, however you feel about the lack of invention, Bioshock 2 deserved better. Mad Max isn't a bad game. It's just a game with terrible timing. It came out in the same month as Metal Gear Solid 5 and Fallout 4, and it ended up largely ignored. Plus, those are just titles released in September 2015 that were set in somewhat deserty open world environments. Mad Max was also competing with Hitman, Just Cause 3, and Rainbow Six Siege. If Mad Max was a person, it'd turn up to your house party with a keg of beer at exactly the same moment the police arrive. It's the person whose ringtone blares out Ramstein just when the bride and groom are about to exchange vows. If Mad Max had arrived a week earlier or a month later, it probably wouldn't have been on this list. But sadly, most people missed out on Mad Max's Angry Man in the Outback Em Up, never getting to experience the vicious fighting and volatile open world racing. And the in depth car customization, balloon rides, and slow mo shotgun kills set it apart from Avalanche Studios Rage 2, a game that promised much but rarely feels as satisfying as driving the dusty apocalypse in a car that's on fire. Is, is the air conditioning broken, Max? Not so fast, Buck. You ain't racing that funky junk here. 
that rubber ain't fit for my finery. Only speed demons on this track. Also known by your uncool uncle as that fizzy drink game with the monsters, Sunset Overdrive falls into the same trap as Rise Son of Rome. Namely, that it started off as an Xbox One exclusive and people who didn't own the console sort of forgot about it. But like the rugged barbarian murdering that came before it, Sunset Overdrive is a fine game that should have been played by more people. And unlike Rise, well, just take a look. Insomniac's love letter to Traverso is all about finding the most fun way to do things. You rarely walk anywhere in this game, because why walk when you can bounce or grind or do whatever this is? It's a frenetic, joyful, utterly unserious game in the truest sense of the word. It doesn't want you to internalise anything, there's no meta-narrative hidden in the item descriptions, it's just a joyful, hopped-up roller coaster ride through a city designed for maximum fun. So if you ever got a sense of impulsive enjoyment from Jet Set Radio, Tony Hawk's or even something like Crazy Taxi, you'll find something to love in Sunset Overdrive, even if it does put you off fizzy juice for life. No thanks. You really can't blame people for underestimating Dying Light. At a glance, it feels like Dead Island, a slightly below average game, meets Mirror's Edge, a slightly above average game. And it came along at a time when people were beginning to grow tired of zombies as the go-to enemy in every action game. But here's the thing, Dying Light was great when it came out, with its challenging day-night cycle, brilliant location and crunchy combat. And it got better and better after launch thanks to some smart world-doubling DLC and things like electrified vehicles to put a bit of a zap in the zombie's step. Go back to Dying Light now and you'll find that even the vanilla game is surprisingly good. Clonking zombies with melee weapons feels brutal and real. And there's a huge selection of characterful side missions that give you a reason to fully explore the dense city of Harren. And on top of that, there's an enjoyable co-op mode, a unique take on asymmetrical multiplayer and even a Battle Royale spin-off, albeit one that's a separate game in early access. Dying Light was a game that created a passionate community that Techland embraced, rotting limbs and all, crafting the ultimate game for those who love parkour and the undead. That is, until Dying Light 2. Race's place is over here. Just find out what this will cost us and come back in one piece. Heat Signature is the spacefaring second game from Tom Francis' Suspicious Developments, the team that brought us the incredible gunpoint. The pitch is wonderfully clear. You break into spaceships, things go horribly wrong, and inevitably, you often end up spinning through infinity while your oxygen runs out. Lovely. The cool thing here is that you really can go into any spaceship. There's a galaxy full of craft to explore and invade, and a compelling roguelike element that generates you a new character whenever your plucky spacefarer dies a horrible death. Which they definitely will. It's also a deeply strategic game. You can pause whenever you want, hack items, and plan your next movements meticulously. That doesn't mean it'll all go exactly as expected. And in fact, most of the joy comes from desperately having to find a plan B. But it's one of those games that's great fun to fail at. It's perhaps a testament to how good Gunpoint is that loads of people carried on playing that and missed this. But if you fancy an emergent, top-down fusion of Hotline Miami, FTL and, well, Gunpoint, Heat Signature is a bright, kinetic thrill. Underrated suggests that a game just didn't review well. Titanfall 2, on the other hand, is an exception to that, since it reviewed brilliantly and has what's probably the best single-player FPS campaign of the decade. Honestly, it's really that good. So why is it here? Because, like so many games that have been lost to time, not enough people played Titanfall 2. And for anyone who has played it, sharing the respawn gospel has become something of an obsession. 
Of course, Respawn didn't exactly help matters by bringing out a quite similar, equally brilliant battle royale game in the shape of Apex Legends. But in this world of infinite time and infinite list features, we feel like there's enough room for both games. More pertinently, Titanfall 2 is the place to come if you want to experience crisp Respawn combat without being interrupted by other players. And I haven't even had time to talk about BT, your wonderfully reactive buddy Titan. He's got the body of a transformer and the brain of a toddler, kind of like a more useful version of Matt. And he deserves to be on every future list of great gaming companions. BT, not Matt. Controls transferred to pilot. So, there you go. As with any list that encompasses an entire decade, there are loads of games we haven't had time to discuss. Titles like Metro Last Light, Alpha Protocol, Binary Domain, and The Hex. But be sure to let us know which underrated games we've missed by commenting below. And remember that you can always give us an ego boost by subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell so that you know when our next video lands.